Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's again Friday. My commitment to you is to do a video every Friday that that tells something of the story of health, hope, and healing. Our focus for this for this week's edition is to talk a little bit about the the prison of our own minds. So I want you to let that sink in for a moment and think about what it means to have a mind and what it means to have a prison and the prison of our mind. Some of you may relate better to, if I say it a different way, to um, just our own belief systems. So I want you to think about what you hold dear, near and dear to your heart, what makes up your um, fixed day, as the French would say it, you, the, the one thing that drives you, the idea that's in the forefront, right here in your frontal lobe of your mind, that communicates truth to you so it allows you to express life in your daily activities. I know that. <laughs> I, yes. I'm sorry. I know there was a lot in there. But stick with me here because this is important. I want to read you a quote. This is from Dan Brown, who's an American author. He says that there is only one form of contagion that travels faster than a virus, and that's fear. James F. Bell, professor of astronomy at Arizona State University says, fear is an insidious virus. Given a breeding place in our minds, it will permeate the whole body of our work. It will eat away with our spirit and block the forward path of our endeavors. Fear is the greatest enemy of progress. Progress moves ever on and does not linger to consider microscopically the implications of each particular action. Only small and overcautious minds see the shadows, blah, 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 blah. He goes through this whole thing that if we are locked in a state of fear, then we will be paralyzed and unable to live. I need you to think about that. Health, hope, and healing. I've talked to people that said literally this week, Doc, I would rather that COVID would, get, would take me than live in the world that we're now living in. Maybe you've thought like that. I want you to know something. We talked last time about the supremacy of the central nervous system. Your brain and spinal cord must be super connected to your body. And your body must be super connected to your brain in order for you to be healthy. We talked a little bit about, um, well, a lot about other things. But I want to talk to you today about a little bit about my story. Uh, some of you know this and some of you don't. When I was younger... Um, I started to go to the chiropractor at a young age. I remember walking, uh, my brother, my older brother was given a check from my mom and we would, the five of us would walk up the street a couple blocks um, to see the chiropractor as a small child. Um, I went to the chiro another chiropractor starting about the age of 12 and I remember going there um, and, and my major problems, I did not have back pain or headaches or migraines or leukemia or anything like that. So I basically um, went because I was always sick. I always was, a, I was like a snotty nose, sniffly kid. This was before HMOs and PPOs and all this stuff. So we didn't go to the, the, the pediatrician a whole lot. You know, we just kind of, we lived and whatever. But I was a uh, bedwetter until the age of 12. And I had chronic diarrhea my entire life. If you go back into my years, it was just uh, would be considered now explosive uh, diarrhea. There was a lactose issue. I remember going to visit the juice lady with my mom. We would go to these little places and this lady had, uh, then we went to an herb lady who had all these vials of herbs. And so my mother was very forward thinking back in the 70s. And in the 80s, um, I remember taking Shackley acidophilus when I was real little. I remember juicing, when I, as an 8-year-old, I remember juicing carrot and celery juice in this little juicer that we had. And I still, to this day, I crave celery juice and carrot juice. Guys, when I went to the chiropractor at the age of 12, he took an x-ray of my pelvis. He explained the chiropractic principle to me. He made an adjustment, and I never wet the bed again. 
one adjustment. It took about two years till I was 14, um, and he was a very gentle chiropractor. Took his time. We didn't get to, we didn't go all that much, but we just went over time. And I'll never forget having my first normal bowel movement. Now, why do I tell you this story? This is it's a personal story, but it's also a story that's my story. And I remember being a sick child. And then I remember this process taking place inside of me that started removing the ways that I thought so that I could actually see a different, better way. And then I actually sank my teeth into it. I started to believe it. I started to practice it. And it changed my life. Because that mental adjustment is as important as the physical one. I'll say it again. The mental adjustment, the effect of positive psychology on our brains is as important as the physical one. Why? Story of a polar bear that was given to the Denver Zoo. And while they waited years for this Arctic tundra to be built, this polar bear stayed in a little cage and it could take two, two and a half steps this way and turn and two and a half steps this way and turn. And, and some people doubt whether this is actually a real story or if it's actually just like a, a dichotomy or a dilemma for our minds to understand. But if you have a polar bear cage in your own mind, if you have a thinking that's trapped like this and you can't see out of it, that's your polar bear cage. It could be anything. It could be the fact that you are living in absolute fear of this virus. And I will tell you right now, for 99 point now, like 7% of people, that fear and that polar bear cage and that limitation of your thinking is worse than the virus itself. So again, I encourage you to rip off the band-aid of your fear, to hop off the train if you're on that fear train, and I want you to let it go a little bit. I want you to listen to this video 16 times. I want you to find places in your life that you can invest in something other than that fear. So back to my own story. I was 14 years old. I had my first normal bowel movement. My life was literally changed by a, a chiropractor and his funny tables that make noise and the understanding of the principle that health hope and healing come from above, down, inside and out. And I dedicated my life to become a chiropractor at the age of 14. I literally went through college talking to people that had no idea what they wanted to do. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna be a chiropractor. And they're like, how did you know that? I'm like, I just know, because that's what I've experienced. So if you are doubting, please don't. Uh, the book of Proverbs says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is what frees us to actually live. So if you're going to have fear, put have a healthy fear of God. One thing that's missing from our culture today is that we don't have any fear of God because like Nietzsche said back in whatever year, God is dead. And I have news for you. He's not. And... He loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And that's a whole other conversation for another time. But understand this. And I told this to a group of reporters that interviewed us the other day. We were just sitting on an outside cafe in Greensburg. And I said, do you mind if we interview you real quick for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette? And I said, no problem. Do you mind if we record you? I don't have a problem. No, I said, please interview me. At the end of the 20-minute lecture I gave them, which is part of the thing, part of my problem... <laughs> they walked away and said, boy, you have a very interesting viewpoint on the world. And I said, isn't that amazing? Because I will not succumb to fear. If you die tomorrow from COVID-19, how does you worrying about it today change anything? Yes, please wash your hands if that's what you feel you need to do. Wear a mask if you need to. But please do not live in fear because it will infect your mind and limit your ability to live up to your full God-given genetic potential. I hope this makes sense to you. If it doesn't, we'll just take it off and we'll redo it next week. But this is Dr. John signing off.
Remember, 724-836-5520 is the phone number. I love you. From right here to right there, through the magic of the internet, please do not live in fear any longer. Have a great week.